So let, let's talk about Syria and Iran, okay? January 11th, okay? It's in the Times of Israel, and they say Iran steps up air defense deployment in Syria in bid to curb Israeli strikes. Unnamed intelligence sources tell Newsweek uh, that Israel has struck at least seven targets related to the network over the past two years and killed 10 Iranians. So they say Iran has invested millions of dollars in an effort to ramp up the deployment of an advanced air defense network in Syria amid repeated attempts by Israel to target Iranian sites and shipments of weapons to its regional proxies. They love this word, their regional proxies. W what does that mean? They have a hamburger chain in Syria? It's an armed militant group? What is it? So citing an unnamed intelligence source from a nation allied with the U.S. Hmm, I wonder who that could be. Uh, Newsweek reported that Iran over the past years has been promoting the deployment of aerial defense capabilities on its behalf in Syria at a cost of tens of millions of dollars in order to deal with the Israeli airstrikes. What, like, what else did you think they were going to do? They're going to throw darts at you when you, like, yeah, they're going to, obviously, they're going to put advanced warning systems in place and, um, you know, whether, whatever SAMs. Uh, they can muster from the Russians. Obviously, it's very newsworthy, but they make it out to seem like it's some kind of elaborate, shady scheme. Like, you know, they're, they're running some kind of, like, underground drug ring or something. I mean, yeah, no shit. You're, you're bombing the, uh, Syria every week. So, obviously, Syria is going to get help. And the Russians, I mean, look. Here's the, the deal with the Russians. Very weird. The Russians, they have ties with Israel. Actually, the... the, the Russia was the first country in the world to recognize Israel in May 1948. And, and you have a, a, a lot of uh, Russian Jews who went to Israel. Um, so Ru Russia obviously has, uh, uh, you know, an important relationship with Israel, but it also has an important relationship with Syria. And Russia, as you guys know, went into Syria to, uh, uh, you know, help uh, Bashar al-Assad. And, and basically, I mean... Take your pick, right? There, how many groups and, and countries are in there? Turkey, you know, Saudi Arabia, uh, Al Qaeda. Logically, you would think, well, of course, if Russia is supporting Syria, they'll give them S four hundreds and S three hundreds. You know, these are these are the most advanced uh, Russian uh, surface to air missiles for shooting down aircraft, right? That's not the case because every single week, basically, the Israelis come in, they they bomb uh, Qunaitra. Uh, which is, um, you know, to the south, uh, they, they bomb Damascus itself, or they bomb Latakia, which is on the Mediterranean. And the Russians don't do anything. The Russians don't want to be caught between the two. And they're already dealing with one threat, which is Al-Qaeda, which is this whole war against Syria. So th th that's one front. Um, but again, you know, Israel is definitely a, a, a belligerent in, in, in that war. And they've helped Al-Qaeda. It's not even a secret. That, that's probably why they don't want to shoot down Israeli jets, because, you know, it, it will turn one problem into a, a much bigger problem. Iran, on the other hand, doesn't have this issue. Iran does not have ties with Israel. Iran doesn't give a shit about Israel. Actually, Israel is a threat to Iran because, you know, ever since uh, the, the revolution, they gave the Israeli embassy to the Palestinians in Tehran, uh, to the PLO. They have supported the Palestinians, uh, you know, sometimes more than other Arab countries even, right? So uh, the, the Iranians, they, they're firm believers in the, in the Palestinian cause and, and not just believers, they, they put in the work. You know, obviously they're, they're going to help Syria because um, Israel is not, it's not just about, oh, we like the Syrians. It's, it's about if we don't deal with this now, it might hurt us as well later because, I mean, the Israelis already as it is, they are, um, you know, every couple of years they'll go assassinate some Iran Iranian scientist. Um, you guys know, like, between 2010 and 2012, so this is under Obama. Um, I think they killed four Iranian scientists, right? They assassinated them. And then, of course, you know, they pushed Trump to kill Soleimani, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I, 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 I fail to see the kind of, uh, you know, the, the shadiness uh, the, the suspicious nature they're trying to attribute to this whole story. What's, what's so special about that? I mean, yes, it's definitely newsworthy, absolutely. But, um, you know, they make it out to seem like, uh, you know, it's, it's Israel that's the victim and, and Israel um, is, is justified in continuously bombing uh, Syria because of Iran. No, I Iran is in Syria because of Israel. It's, it's not, you know, Israel responding to a threat it's the other way around you've got everything upside down but of course i mean you know you're, you're gonna tell me well yeah they're gonna say this because this is times of israel no the british press will say the same thing the american press will say the same thing because they're biased and ignorant now a few months ago so this is in november 2022 
the uh, the Israelis targeted um, they targeted someone uh, in Syria, an Iranian, who was helping with the uh, uh, air, you know helping Syria set up this air defense system. Right, this is Times of Israel. You can see the date, November twenty third. So the IRGC accused Israel of of killing a senior aerospace officer near Damascus, and uh, his name was uh, Davoud Jafari, and um, they killed him with a roadside bomb. I haven't seen the pictures, but they, 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 they describe basically the, the, the killing of the, his bodyguard, and um, he, he later succumbed to his wounds in hospital, so the bodyguard was killed instantly, but um, the officer later died from his wounds. It's kind of disgusting because there's nothing you know, abnormal about Iran helping Syria set up defenses because you know, they, they want you to think that this, this somehow threatens Israel. It really doesn't. Uh, it's the other way around. You know, 1967 until now, uh, it's, it's Israel that's inside Syria. But of course, you're not supposed to talk about that. You're only supposed to talk about Russia, you know, uh, occupying Ukraine. And, and since 1948, the Israelis are occupying Palestine. So there's a clear aggressor, uh, invader, and a victim. But they want to twist the whole story and make it seem like it's the other way around when it's not. Jerusalem Post, they're saying that... Uh, you know, the Dam Damascus airport was being used for transporting weapons, and uh, that's why they had to destroy it completely. You know, they always come up with justifications. Uh, D Damascus airport, at the end of the day, it's, it's not just the biggest airport, it's a civilian, uh, uh, it's civilian infrastructure, and they blew it up. They did the same with Aleppo's airport, they did the same thing with the port in Latakia. You know, they, they just find excuses uh, to, to act like bullies. That's, that's really what it is. But I'll just show you quickly here what kind of equipment they're dealing with. So the Syrian Defense Ministry tested jamming systems in October, succeeding in getting Israeli aircraft to leave Syrian airspace at least twice. Okay. And they say that these sources in Jerusalem Post claim that Iran had brought two Bavar 373 air defense system to the Damascus area, with one being placed near the town of uh, Rakhla, located near the border with Lebanon, and just about 30 kilometers north of the, the Golan Heights. That's what Israel's occupying. The Bavar 373 systems were brought into Syria in August after an agreement was reached with Russia and the Syrian government. Speaking of which, I just want to say one thing. Um, in Ukraine, you guys saw how effective the, um, the Russian uh, purchase of Iranian drones was, right? People were laughing and making fun of it and saying, oh, well, look, they, they, they don't have the means to produce their own anymore. They have to turn to Iran, ha, ha, ha. And they're not laughing anymore, right? Because uh, it turns out the, the Iranians, even, even under sanctions, they're able to advance very rapidly in, uh, you know, in their defense capabilities. And I, I know it's equally true for air defense because you know, the reality of the situation, not just sanctions, but constantly being under threat from the U.S., from Israel, you know, you, you, uh, they basically had to um, adapt to it. And so I don't know, I don't know uh, um, what the Russians are... are are doing in Syria in terms of air defense, but basically not, not much. I, I get it. I get it on a, on a you know, on, on a foreign relations level, why, why they don't want to shoot down Israeli jets for Syria. They're already doing, you know, they're already sticking out their neck enough, but, uh, uh, you know, there's going to come a point where the defenses are going to be more powerful than the Israeli jets. And I think, I think that's inevitable because Whenever there was equipment like it, when, once the Russians, I think, gave Syria S-300, which is, again, much more advanced than the S-200s that Syria has. Um, and the Israelis, I think they destroyed one of the shipments. But they're having a lot of trouble with, uh, with Iran because, you know, Iran is able to, to help Yemen, uh, to help Hezbollah, to help uh, Hamas, to help Syria. You know, and, and of course, uh, in Iraq, Hashd al-Shabi. So, you know, it, it's, uh, it's kind of like chasing a ghost. And, and the same can be said with the Russians um, in terms of sanctions evasion. You know, they, 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 they make it seem like uh, they're winning, but they're, they're having a lot of, a lot of trouble uh, overcoming uh, the supply network. And I, I don't think they're going to be successful ultimately, because if you compare the situation now to how it was 20, 20 years ago or, you know, 50 years ago, I'm, I'm talking about the, the resistance. It's so much stronger. L look, look at Hezbollah. Look at Hamas. Look at Iran. Look at Syria. They, they, they have pushed through literally everything. Look at the Yemenis. You know, for years and years and years, you've got all these powerful countries sending weapons to the Saudis, and they, they just can't, they can't win. 